Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for this very first LXCAT tutorial. My name is Jacob Stevens and I'm here on behalf of the entire LXCAT team and in this first tutorial I'm going to show you an introduction to the LXCAT website. An outline of my talk is given here. We'll begin with an introduction and example of the data hosted on the LXCAT website. We'll do an example calculation of swarm coefficients using the online BULSIG Plus tool. And to tie this up, we'll do an online comparison of calculated and measured swarm coefficients. To get started, we're on the LXCAT homepage, and you also see here a quick blurb about what the LXCAT project is. From the LXCAT homepage, there are a number of options to the users. We're going to go directly to the data center. The data center is the heart of the LXCAT database. The data hosted here includes scattering cross sections, differential scattering cross-sections, interaction potentials, oscillator strengths, and swarm and transport data for both electrons and ions. For this tutorial, we're going to be interested in doing a calculation of electrons interacting with the background gas of argon. So to proceed, we'll select scattering cross-sections, and we will deselect ions and click Next. And this brings us to a page where we see several databases from which we could pull data. For this tutorial, we're going to be working with the Phelps database. So we'll simply use the deselect all tool, select the Phelps database, and notice this brings up a blurb about the Phelps database and gives you some insight to the origins of this data. To proceed, we click Next. And as mentioned earlier, we're interested in electrons interacting with argon, so we'll select argon and click Next. And now we have the opportunity to select which cross-sections we wish to view. In our case, we're interested in doing a complete calculation of electron-argon interactions, so we're going to select all three effective, excitation, and ionization cross-sections and select Next. This brings us to another page where, again, we have the opportunity to select which cross-sections we're interested in. We'll use the Select All tool and also point out this reference here for these data. Clicking Next. And this brings us to a very important point. The terms of use for accessing and utilizing data from the LXCAT website. It's absolutely critical that individuals who utilize this data properly reference both the original source of the data as well as the LXCAT database. Obviously, there's a tremendous amount of effort that goes into producing these data, and the individuals and research groups responsible for executing that work deserve to be cited. The same can be said for the LXCAT team. There's a tremendous amount of time and effort that goes into developing the tools and resources for disseminating this data, and these individuals also deserve to be cited. So I again reiterate, it's absolutely critical that people who utilize this data reference both the original source of the data as well as the LXCAT project. Agreeing to these terms, we click Yes, I have read and understood. And this brings us back to our original page. We can proceed with Next. And now we see the data that we've pulled from the LXCAT database. Plotted to the left are each cross-section on the y-axis, the cross-section magnitude, and on the x-axis, energy. Looking at the legend entries, we see that entry 1, the blue circles, are the effective cross-section, while entry 2, orange x's, are the excitation cross-section, and finally, entry 3, the green stars, are the ionization cross-section. From this page, users have a number of options. For instance, rescale a new window. As an example, we could set the y-axis to linear and set the y-minimum as zero. These data may be downloaded in various formats, including text file, a PNG plot of the cross-sections, XML format, or zip file. Looking at the text file, here we see the standard LXCAT format cross-section file with the details of the formatting given here. As indicated, our data was pulled from the Phelps database, and again, we see the blurb about the Phelps database which tells us about the origin of these data. 
Also important to point out that the proper reference for these data is included here. Below, we have the tabulated data, beginning first with the cross-section identifier, in this case, effective, and the tabulated data in the form of energy versus cross-section. And again, for excitation, energy, and cross-section. And finally, ionization, energy, and cross-section. Now that we've seen an example of the data hosted on the OXCAT database, I would like to show you how these data can be used in an online calculation. To proceed with this, we go to Online Calculations and select Bolsig Plus. Briefly, Bolsig Plus is a very popular two-term Boltzmann equation model that is widely applied in the low temperature plasma community. Bolsig Plus takes input data in the form of electron neutral scattering cross sections and calculates swarm and transport data. An online version of Bolsig Plus is available through the LXCAT website. To proceed with an online calculation using Bolsig Plus, we simply click Update List of Species. Here again we see several databases that we can pull our data from. As before, we're going to work with the Phelps database, which is already selected, so we'll click Next. And as mentioned before, we're interested in doing a calculation of electrons interacting with the background gas of argon, which we see is already selected, so we'll again click Next. And here, the LXCAT website gives us the opportunity to download the cross-sections, which we're not going to do here, so we'll simply select Next. From this page, users have a number of options for the configuration of Bolsig Plus. For details about this configuration, consult the Bolsig Plus website linked here. For this initial demonstration, we'll consider a reduced electric field, E over N, from 0.1 Townsend to 500 Townsend, and we'll do this for 20 data points. To proceed with the calculations, we'll select Run Calculations. And now we see the data produced from our Bolsig Plus calculation, beginning first with the mobility gas density product versus reduced electric field. Similarly, we have the diffusion coefficient, mean electron energy, reduced Townsend coefficient, reaction rates, each electron energy distribution function, and their anisotropy. As a final part of this tutorial, I would like to demonstrate how these calculated coefficients can be compared against experimental measurements. To proceed with this, we'll simply scroll up and use the Save Data for Further Browsing tool, and we'll use the default label and click Submit. And now we'll return to the data center. Now, rather than scattering cross sections, we're going to select the swarm and transport data and click Next. And again, we see various databases from which we can pull data. For this example, we're going to take data from the IST Lisbon database and also point out the Bolsig Plus solver, which holds the data that we just calculated in our online calculation. Using the Deselect All tool, selecting IST Lisbon database and Bolsig Plus solver, and clicking Next. Again, our calculations were for argon, so we'll select argon and proceed. And now we have the option to select which swarm and transport data we wish to compare. For this tutorial, let us consider the mobility gas density product and the reduced Townsend coefficient. Clicking Next. From this page, we see that there are considerable different sources of these data. For this example, we'll consider the mobility gas density data from Nakamura and Karachi and the reduced ionization coefficient from Kruatop. From our calculations, we'll select both our mobility and our reduced ionization coefficient. Proceeding by clicking Next. Finally, we have a comparison of our calculated swarm and transport data versus experimental measurements, beginning first with the mobility gas density product versus reduced electric field. 
Looking at the legend entries, entry 1, blue circles, are data that's been pulled from the IST Lisbon database, and we see that these are the experimental measurements of Nakamura and Karachi, while entry 2, the orange X's, are the results of our online calculations, which use the Phelps cross-sections. It is interesting to note that even though the Phelps cross-sections only include three interactions for electron with argon, we have excellent agreement between these data. Scrolling down to the reduced Townsend coefficient, again, we have entry 1, which was extracted from the IST Lisbon database, is a reduced ionization coefficient measured by Kruatov, while entry 2, given as orange X's, is a result of our Bolsig plus calculation, again using the Phelps cross-sections. As before, we see that the Phelps cross-sections do an excellent job of reproducing experimental measurements when used in the Bolsig plus solver. And this brings us to the end of our tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any additional questions or comments, we encourage you to add those to the discussion below.